Southampton nil, Manchester United won. Uh, massive win, bro. Like, we badly needed that. How did you break it down? It was a really static game, a really bitty game. I don't care. I, I, I don't, I don't yeah. care. We, a couple of weeks ago, it was where are the wins going to come from? Back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League. We need it. We really do need it. And you know what? People can talk about styles of football and styles of football did change in that game. And I don't, I don't see a performance today and that's how Eric Ten Hag wants to play. But I don't think he particularly cares that much. I think he's going to look at that as if you said to Eric Ten Hag before the game, three points, clean sheet. He said, thank you very much. I don't care about anything else you've got to say. Don't yeah. care. Don't <laughs> care. With how especially those first two games went against Brighton, against Brentford. I think there was huge worry about the Brentford game, really, wasn't there? You know, yeah. you know, similar kind of atmosphere, similar kind of team, Southampton more established than Brentford. But, you know, that style of play as well, that was, that was the worry going into today. And I think that the players, I think Eric Ten Hag, I think everyone involved deserves a lot of credit. Was it a good performance? No. It wasn't good performance, but if we can get to a point where we're just winning games, performances can come later. That was what the problem was last season. Performances were bad, results were bad. Yeah. Result was good today. Performance wasn't great, take it. Take it all day. Yeah, um, there's a lot of relationships building over the pitch and we were talking about the togetherness of the team and everyone's talking about Martinez and yeah. Varane and Malasia and how important are, are those guys to, you know, the kind of new look United? It is a bit of a new look United. Massive, massive. Of course, it, absolutely important. The the key thing is when you talk about that defence is can Varane stay fit? Look, back-to-back -back games, will he play Thursday? Mm. That's the turnaround that I mean, we're right Saturday, about. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Look, he's a professional it's footballer. Five days should be able to do that. He's a footballer. He yeah. should be able to do that. Will he, though? I don't know. Mm. But that back four, there's something there. I said it during the stream. There is definitely something there with that back four. I look at that partnership. How many times, and I don't mean to turn this into a Harry Maguire thing. I yeah. don't want to turn it into a Harry Maguire thing, but when it was Maguire and Varane, Maguire and Lindelof, when it wouldn't be a great performance, we'd go, yeah, but the relationship, the building relationship. Martinez and Varane did it one game against Liverpool. Yeah. Two games. That it looked telepathic there. already, yeah. Already does. And if they're doing sliding tackles at their blocks, they're giving it to each other. Or they're going to De Gea. Good save, mate. You know, trying to do that. They're trying to... You said it during the stream, we were laughing at Ramsdale for it last season, but you need it. You, do. you need it. So there does feel like there's something there with that. I think McTominay actually deserves a lot of credit today. Um, his position in the team might be somewhat up in the air, but I think he showed what he can bring. Can he bring technical quality? No, of course no. he can't. But in games like today... Perfect game for a minute. Perfect game where you don't, you're not playing great, but you just need that defensive steal, especially to see in the game out. You need it, and it'll be interesting to see what how he shapes up Ten Hag against Leicester. Because I said it, like he could switch to like a four three three. The way the team ended, especially that midfield three, maybe he goes with that. Maybe he goes with Casemiro, McTominay, and Eriksson. Maybe he shifts it. I don't know, but I'm looking at a team there that a couple of weeks ago was really fragile. We're still fragile, but there's there is something there. I I, I do think so. I think there's something there. Two positive results. But make no mistake again, play Leicester. If we lose, it means nothing. Yeah. It means nothing. Yeah. We're still on and that. And things like that, though, can, that, can and will happen over the course yeah. of the season. Couple of strides forward. Oh, got pegged back. That was a mm -hmm. loss. Try and bounce back. Oh, got a draw. Couple of wins. You know, because we're in a new, a new era yeah. under a new manager. Talk to me about the little bit of quality we did get in the game, though, um, in terms of the goal. Because I tell you what... It was something we, we were being quite scathing with Bruno's analysis, and and rightly so, because mm -hmm. up to that point he was poor. Yeah, but he always possesses that in the in the locker, isn't it? That's why you keep him on, isn't it? Yeah. that is the that is the frustrating thing is because you keep him on because he can do that. The issue is that when he doesn't do that, it's really frustrating because you go, why did we keep him on? But that goes a half chance, really. You know, the cross is decent in the box. As we mentioned, first half, he was really sloppy. And a lot of people were, but he was really sloppy for what he's meant to be doing. You know, he gets the ball. You're begging, play it simple. Yeah, just play, play it simple. Easy Put your foot on it. No, it's like a flick, blind mm. pass. You're going, oh, come on. But then he can do that. That is not an easy finish. And really, the goal came out of nowhere. Yeah, it did. Our best patterns of play and our best parts of the game was that early 15, 20 minutes where we created some chances in the blocks. But when that goal came in the second half, we weren't threatening. Mm. Alanga just happens to do a direct run and it comes out of nowhere. Take a chance. Because yeah, we were chance. so safe before that, weren't yeah. we? Everything was in front of Southampton. It was yeah. like you said loads of times, it was bitty, it was lethargic, it was laboured. Mm. 
But as soon as he went from outside to in, just to commit some players, yep. make something happen, it, it changed it. Yep, just changed something and then suddenly we've got something to grip. We've got, mm. something, we've got something to hold on to for the game and that's why he played Bruno. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't say that's a captain's performance. You know, captain arrived when it mattered, but that's what he offers. Mm. He does offer goals, he does offer assists and we don't know Ronaldo's future, but maybe in a team without Ronaldo, those goals are going to start to come back. Someone's got to do them, especially in the absence of a true number nine. If Martial's going to be injured a lot, someone's got to pick up those goals. Someone's got to pick up that mantle and get goals and assists. And he did it today. He did it today. And ultimately, people will forget about the poor performance. They'll remember the goal. And most importantly, they'll remember the three points. That's all that matters. Yeah. Um, with the, the transfer window, you know, closing, Eric Turner was asked about it, clearly offered up no dead certs that Ronaldo would be here, but we don't need him to confirm or not confirm that. We know that. Um, but he did say, you know, we will be, you know, in the market to the last second, basically. That was quite a strong we line. Strike. Strike, you know, to the last seconds. But from watching that without, with Ronaldo on the bench again and without Martial in a different type of game and having to play Rashford up front in that, what did it highlight to you? Need a right winger. Need a right winger. It, it was very, very obvious that we needed a right winger because especially when you look at in that first half, Alanga wasn't great. I know Alanga had the direct run. I know Alanga wasn't, um, and he had the direct run, he wasn't great in the first half, but we needed that option. We're light. We're still light, irrespective. I mean, look at the striking situation. It was really interesting what Ten Hag said about Rashford at half time, where he said, yeah. I need you to be more of a point. And basically what he said, I need you to be more of a point. I need you to actually bring people in, play with your back to goal like Martial does. So we need a number nine. Need a right winger. We just need people. I said it before. We <laughs> Get need bodies. People. We need people. Whether that's Anthony. Yes, Pep, but it has to be the, the right people. Yeah, but, that's, that, but that's gone though. I mean, that's my point. That has gone. The idea yeah. of waiting the for the like right that. person. Yeah, we can't do that. Now. The right people aren't around at this point. It's five that's, days. That's our fault as yeah, well. Four or yeah. five days left. So we need people at this point. I understand they have to be the right people and the right character and the right profile. We need people at this point. Whether that's Anthony, Depay. Striker, I don't know who that is. I don't know if that is the pie, I don't know. Mm. But we need people. <laughs> like that for your title. We need people, yeah. yeah. We need people. Um, the man of the match by BT was Lissandro Martinez. Do you agree with that? Is that your man of the match? I think that's fair. Yeah. I, I do think that's fair. And that's not just because of the criticism that he's received. or I don't even know if it's criticism what he received. Just it doubters. It's, it's weird... just people just jumping on him. Like, again, because he's four, five at nine. Let's yeah. just, he ain't going to be able to play. Yeah. Let's stick him by it. And, and, and as you mentioned as well, don't judge him by a bad result. Don't even judge him by how many headers he wins. Exactly. Judge him by clean sheets. Judge him by points. Judge him by performances. And that's what he's done. Even in like the Brentford game, nobody played well. No. I don't think he stood out as being particularly He didn't even get bad. dominated by Tony no. as well, like everyone made out. No, exactly. So I, I, I think today was a fair uh, fair person to give him to Man the Match uh, award. Could have given it to a few people in that back four, to mm. be fair. I don't really see people further forward that I'd have given it to. So I think... Bruno, match winner, one as a game. Okay. I, I, okay. I know. I think, but I think Martinez is fair, and he not only brings quality and you know uh, composure on the ball, but he also just brings that intangible bit of aggression, bit of bite. I don't want to say passion and desire, but but, it is, though. but it's just it is. that it's that, yeah. and it's not false as well. Not you know he'll do it every game. Yeah. He's not just doing it because he's a new signing. He's yeah. renowned and for he, that, and he's not doing it when we've conceded. You know, like you see again, not to make it about Maguire, but you know sometimes when we concede, and you see people going, "Ah, come on, no." Yeah. He's doing it when we're one 0 up and doing a slide tackle, going, "That's what I want." Yeah, that's why he was Eric um, Eric Ten Hag's guy. That's why he was he's setting the standards, isn't he? Because he knows I like, I need not only that player, I need that character, yeah. I need that personality, and that's what he brings. 